have to apply your mind, have to exercise your wisdom and discover your reasons in your jurisdiction which would be the best suited reasons for achieving the same. <coughs> I believe while information technology is a blessing to court administration and also to justice dispensation, yet it poses its problems. Unfortunately, we are not prone to talk of those problems or of the negatives. However, it is important to be reminded of them. I beg to point out two such negatives or cons or gray areas. Do you remember some time back, not really long ago, maybe 10 years down the line, there was a rule in different high courts of India and of other countries as well that you could not access a judicial order, you could not peruse, you could not even read a judicial order in a matter in which you were or are not a party. That was the idea of privacy involved. So that being the basis, that being the juristic basis of that rule, come down to the present times. In the present times, we have what we call is easy access to court websites. You type in Supreme Court of India, you get access to its website, you type in a certain criminal writ petition, you number, you type in maybe a respondent or a petitioner's name, and lo and behold, you have that order before you. And you can read it, you can download it. At some point of frame, the idea of privacy vis-a-vis -vis an ongoing legis an ongoing adjudication has or is becoming a casualty. Either the court administrators need to awaken to it or we need to review and say no, that privacy, that idea of privacy was wrong and we are now, we are now going to break the, those walls of privacy down and it's going to become open and yet more open for everybody. The other issue, the other difficulty that can happen at times, but we should not overlook is the difficulty and the possibility, which is thankfully not the probability, of an electronic system getting corrupted or crashing down altogether. If you do not rely, if we do not put in the mandate of modernization of our courts towards the e-courts, if we do not put on the mandate that yes, we necessarily have to have a hard copy kept in the registries respectively wherever and for whatever, we run the risk of losing in one go a huge amount of documentation and with that a huge amount of adjudication done in the prior decades or years. And that can be a substantial loss both to administration of justice as well as to dispensation of justice and equity. These are two areas which I gave you as examples of where concerns on the negative side occur and happen and spring on us when we talk of e-courts and application of IT onto the judiciary. Next, let me share some thoughts <coughs> of where we are today on e-courts. To begin with, I was amazed when I discovered that my fellow attorneys in Massachusetts were majority of them far behind in having access and competence vis-a-vis -vis computer applications and vis-a-vis -vis using computer hardware and applying it to justice access and delivery. It is some for some reason or the other the mature generation of lawyers around the world even today are not as computer friendly as we think them to be. So all along, bar associations and jurists have to invest in e-training, in IT training of jurists and lawyers of the age that they are practicing in. The younger ones, of course, they are being equipped at the law school state itself with all kinds of IT technology. 
Today, e-courts are being used in India, in Delhi. We have a whole e-court designated as the High Court, I understand. In California, it is only as late as uh, 2008 that we started the system of electronic file. In Los Angeles, it was only in 2008 that for the first time they started training their lawyers how to do e-filing and how to file petitions and look onwards into using that system. To my mind, e-courts are not the best when they deliver a summons in a fraction of a second. The idea behind summons is not the immediate delivery. The idea behind summons is to communicate information and then allow time for the summoned party to apply his or her mind and then come to the court. That is the idea. So the immediate delivery by e-courts of summons cannot be the very good reason. That can be only one of the many supplementary benefits that we get and, and we have. Similarly, the idea of e-filing is a matter of convenience. Any lawyer can file paper petitions, can also file e do e-filing. To my mind, the real next step onwards for e-courts will be when we start using what you younger people call as chat platforms for using adjudication which means a learned bench will sit in the courtroom with two monitors in front of it. One monitor will have PDF documents displayed on it, an extra so and so, sale deed so and so, this, that, etc. The other monitor will be a live chat platform. On that, after confirmation of a digital signature, the learned advocates of either side, the attorneys of either sides, would be permitted by the court administrator, the IT administrator, to log in. Supposing some advocate is sitting in London and doesn't want to miss this hearing, he can opt for this kind of a e-court, as I call it, as a true e-court. He would log in into a chat platform, and then the other counsel, even if he's sitting right there in the court, will be required to type in his argument as it flows. So we have two screens for each of them. One screen displays the documents on PDF. The other screen is a live chat platform, like you have the MSN chats and, and whatever you do. The only difference being that these will be more secure, these will be of restricted entry, and that is when, I dare say, true achieving of e quotes would happen. That is the next major step forwards which we should look to. My firm, the Constitutional Law Laboratory, is now setting up an inter-university center for legal research and solution crafting. What we are doing is one of the activities is we are devising platforms for e courts And we look forward for these platforms to be of greater use in regions which have poor connectivity, in third world countries which have poor connectivity, which have lawyers spread out in the country, and it is not always convenient for everybody to gather together. And more often than not, also for witnesses to be able to have a witness testimony delivered right sitting in her home, in a village, in a, in, in, in a village of Ghana, an old lady is able to depose under the watchful eyes of a court-appointed local commissioner. And that deposition comes straight onto the bench in the form of its e-courts. These are the applications of e-courts that I do look forward to. And my experience of the Inter-University Center devising these has been happy. We are finding people who are trusting it. There was a generation when the electronic voting machines was mistrusted by most voters. Today, voters trust it. Similarly, there will be very soon a time when the most less literate of litigants would be able to trust e-courts of today and hopefully of tomorrow. I thank you. For a moment of attention. Uh, we know that I think I'd like to ask if you can ask. Thank you, Margaret. Yeah, 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 please continue. Yes, Currently, I have asked the General Secretary of the Indian Academy of Forensic Medicine just for the sake of introducing myself. 
Regarding the, the, the comments of the first speaker, this uh, summons, the serving of summons, I think that will be a great step because we as a doctor, we face a lot of difficulties while receiving all those then afterwards, the fourth speakers also told that it will be very convenient for us and not only that, further that also, when we are submitting the copies of the medical legal reports and post-mortem reports to the honorable court, we, because we have got the fully computerized center at AIMS, right? So we will be sending it to the court as well. So in that way, we will be saving a huge amount of money and it will be much convenient to everyone. I being the medical in record section in charge, I propose this because see, for all this, we need someone from the judiciary who is here who can expedite this. We have got our disposal facilities at our disposal, but how to proceed in this matter? After a lot of efforts only this last last month also this process of some, this appearance of the doctors was specified. Previously doctors were used to call at 10 a.m. They used to sit at up to 2 p.m. and afterwards the, the evidence used to start. It was a huge loss of the precious professional time. The Honorable High Court of Delhi District Session Judge, he took cognizance of my petition and he issued a specific order that now onwards the doctors will be called from 2 p.m. onwards. So all these steps are necessary. So I, I request uh, Dr. Adish Agrawal to please incorporate in their findings that yes, at least in Delhi we can start. Uh, we have already got e-court. Now yes, yesterday there was a news there that uh, online FIR will be there. Every, every, the, every police station has to be an online FIR. So that will be one step and at least we can have a model center at Delhi, afterwards we can spread to whole of the India. So it will be reciprocal. So that is from the suggestion from forensic medicine because that will ease the burden from, lot of burden from us also. Yes. Where the professional time will be utilized properly for the patient care services. Because for us it's basically only helping for the judiciary but in that way we, our much time is lost for that. So I request this recommendation to, for, from this platform to make it for the recommendation of the, this conference. Thank you. We have put a lot of Uttar Pradesh and now I am for Haryana and Punjab. Every state government is facing these problems because mostly all these road accidents, murders, <coughs> the, the basically police bring the dead bodies or injured to the government hospitals. Yes. So, so much. The, our doctors are earlier. They are supposed to come in morning and in the evening. They are even up to evening their case the evidence was not being recorded yeah. and say now adjourned. So and most of the time, so we have taken them every doctor. Yes, there is nothing special. It was only for the proving of that regard. That is ridiculous. It then can be accepted just by the e-filing. Yes, this is the card you accepted, that's all. No, no, I differ with you, there are two types of witnesses. Some are yeah, formal. I am talking about the 90% cases, of the address and all that. Because that we have conducted the post-mortem, yeah. that is a medical witness. That, yes, that's true. But at least 90% yeah. burden we can ease. Yes. Not in all cases, but 90% cases we can very much ease on the burden. So, we have always taken up the matter with the high courts, and high courts have issued directions to the lower judiciary that formal witnesses should not be called. If they have come, even defense counsel is not available, courts now they are not adjourning any matter because the defense counsel is not available. Court will record the evidence that I have brought such and such a record, this peer, this signature of such and such officer and court exhibit those, those documents. Earlier, even they were being, they were coming and going. So, step now, courts are also once the state government take up this matter, and we have taken up the matter with the high courts, and high courts have issued the direction to the low, uh, lower judiciary. But you see, in India, it's a very big country. Problem is, so sometimes our officers also want because they want to come, because if they, they have been posted, suppose, they were 